The man whose name means Jehovah Hides prophesied between Nahum and Jeremiah, circa 625 BC. The great-great-grandson of good King Hezekiah, he followed the dismal days of Manasseh and Ammon, and his words no doubt influenced the revival in the days of King Josiah. But it seems Zephaniah wasn't impressed, considering these stirrings too little and too late. His main theme is the time when Jehovah will no longer hide, a period called the Day of the Lord, a phrase found seven times in this book. And this prophecy is full of statements that declare the Lord's purpose, 28 times beginning with the resolute words, the Lord will. Chapter 1 describes God's comprehensive judgments, something unique to Zephaniah. Then focusing on Judah and Jerusalem, he describes the various aberrations that call for judgment. 1. Those who worship other lords, verse 5. 2. Those who turned from the one true Lord, verse 6. And 3. Those who never sought the Lord in the first place, also verse 6. He then calls for what Revelation 19 names the Supper of the Great God, where carrion birds and scavengers are invited to clear the battlefields of the bodies of the rebels. The scene is both graphic and grisly. Semitic scholar George Adam Smith describes the coming wrath. No hotter book lies in all the Old Testament. Neither dew, nor grass, nor tree, nor any blossom lives in it, but it is everywhere fire, smoke, and darkness, drifting chaff, ruins, nettles, salt pits, and owls and ravens looking down from the windows of desolate palaces. But that isn't the end, of course. Chapter 2 presents an exhortation to seek the Lord. God's offer mirrors the meaning of Zephaniah's name, Jehovah Hides. In chapter 2 and verse 3, he states, Seek righteousness, seek humility. It may be that you will be hidden in the day of the Lord's anger. Like Amos, the prophet is called on to recount the judgments God will bring on Israel's enemies, the Gentile nations. Chapter 3 describes first the Lord's judgment on Jerusalem. But then Zephaniah paints the scene when the judgment is passed. Here again, along with pronouncing condemnation, Zephaniah also announces restoration. Even in the darkest hours of the night, these men of God saw the gray streaks of dawn on the horizon. Interestingly, the Lord reveals the future blessings on the Gentiles first, then on the Jews. Who can resist the joy and peace that comes when we believe this closing promise? The Lord your God in the midst of you is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over you with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over you with singing. This has been a scripture snapshot of the prophecy of Zephaniah.